Hello and welcome to the long overdue sixth part to my Sky or Creation Kit um, Quest tutorial series. In uh, this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to make uh, how to work with the player sleeping and make events happen for that. So basically, we're going to kind of emulate how the Dark Brotherhood quest would work in Oblivion. How when you killed this, when you killed someone, it would next time you fell asleep, someone would visit you. Just to keep things simple, we're not going to have anyone visit. I don't have to deal with dialogue or scenes like that. But we're just going to have what's going to happen is as soon as you kill a guard, um, the next time you sleep, um, you're going to wake up with a note in your pocket and it's going to say something about how I know what you've done. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to start by killing this guard. So there he goes, he's dead. Um, now we're going to go and get some sleep. So I'm just going to quickly teleport to the White Run Bannered Mare. And then while I'm here, I'm just going to rent a room and go to sleep. If it's worth, sure thing. It's yours for it. Let's go to the room. And I'm gonna sleep for an hour. Wake up, it says, oh, you started a mysterious note quest. And then there's all this stuff. And then if I look inside of my inventory, in the books area, there is a mysterious note. I can read it. It says, Dear Aram, I know what you did to him, that guard. I hope to see more of your work. Sincerely, a watchful friend. Alright, so that's how to start a quest. Obviously this could go further from here, but I didn't go into any more detail. We just had to do a simple how to respond to sleep events and various things. So, let's see how this is made. Okay, so for this tutorial, the first thing we're going to do is uh, create our quest. So go to the character tree and then this quest subtree, where I click and select new. I give this the ID of TQM06 um, Mysterious Note. I'll give the quest name the name Mysterious Note. I'm also going to change the type to be a side quest and give it a priority of 60 and then change the event to the kill actor event. So what this is doing is saying that this um, this quest is actually started by the story manager uh, when a kill actor event occurs. So a kill actor event is just any time an actor is killed by another actor that event fires off and so later on we'll use the story manager to set up to make sure that our quest starts uh, given the appropriate conditions. Okay, so I'm going to click OK to close that and then open it back up so I can set the quest stages. Right click and select New. So for stage 0, this will be our startup stage, so check that box. Then I'm going to add a new entry to the log entry just to make some notes. So basically, um, we're going to write here, we're going to say waiting for player to sleep. So what's interesting about this quest is that actually the first stage in the quest is just waiting for the player to sleep because the quest doesn't start until a player has killed a guard in this case. Um, so our first stage in the quest is waiting for him to sleep, and then we'll put the note in his inventory uh, when he goes to sleep. Okay, and let's make another stage in here. And we'll put the stage index 10, uh, put a new log entry, and I'll make a note here saying, player slapped, note added to inventory. Okay, so that sets up that. Um, the next thing we should do is actually set up our quest aliases. So let's go to the quest aliases tab, right click and select a new reference alias. Um, the first alias we're going to make is an alias for the player himself. So I'm going to type in player as the alias name, select unique actor, and type in player here. And then we're going to add a script to him in just a second. But for now, I'll just close this out. Let's make another reference alias. And this one for, will be for the victim that the player killed, in this case, the guard. So let's give the alias name victim. Um, we're going to leave it as find matching reference, but you want to check the box that says from event. And notice how it automatically selects the kill actor event. That's because this quest, as we mentioned earlier, has been set to occur after the kill actor event uh, occurs in the story manager. So they're going to change the event data. So this allows us to fill in uh, this alias given um, the parameters of the event. So in the kill actor event, there's two parameters. There is a killer and there's a victim. So in this case, the killer would be the player and the victim would be the victim, the guard that the player killed. So we'll select victim as the event data. So what this means is that the alias, um, as, soon as, the as soon as the player kills the guard and then the event occurs, kicks off and starts up this quest, it will automatically fill in that alias that, um, Sorry, it will automatically fill in the, this alias, the victim alias, with the guard that was killed. All right, so go and click OK. And the last thing is going to make one more uh, reference alias, and this will be for the note that we're going to place in the player's pocket. Um, we'll just call it note for now, and we will set it in just a second. We first need to go create our note. So let's go do that now. Click OK. 
All right, so to make our note, we're going to go to the items tree, go to the book subtree. I'm going to type in, I'm just going to grab one of the existing letters. So there's a letter called love letter. I'm just going to grab that, open it up. I'm going to change it to the ID to be TQM06 uh, mysterious note note. So the reason I'm adding note again is that TQM06 mysterious note is the ID for our quest. And I'm just adding the note in the end. So otherwise I'll give you a warning saying that ID exists, already exists. You need to choose a different ID. Um, we have the name Mysterious Note. And this is again the name that will show up in the player's inventory. So what we need to do is I'm going to erase all the text, but I'm going to leave the font face to the written, the handwritten font. So it looks pretty good. Now we're going to add in, we're going to write a letter to the player. So what I'm going to do is do this. Dear, and then open brace, um, alias equals player, comma. So this little section here, this is part of the text replacement inside of... Um, inside of Skyrim and allows you to replace certain words in your text with various uh, you know, pre-programmed words. So in this, in this case, we're going to set it to the name of the player. That's all it's going to do. Then you're going to read out the, or write out the rest of the note. It says, um, I know what you did to um, him, that guard. I hope to see more of your work. And then sincerely, a watchful friend. So uh, one thing you'll notice is that it's going to say him, even though the player killed the guard. So again, we can take advantage of. Um, it could be a, sorry, it could be a female guard, and so it'll still say him. But what we really want to say is her or him, depending on the gender of the guard. So again, we can take advantage of our text replacement, and to do this, we can say alias dot pronoun object obj equals victim. And so what this is going to do is going to replace uh, that tag with either him or her, depending on the gender of the of the victim. So again, this must match the alias name that you set up in your quest. So I have an alias called called victim inside of my quest. If I had it, if I had some different name for it, like victim A or victim B, this needs to match that exactly. So I'd have victim A or victim B in there, depending on what you have in your quest. If that's not correct, it's not going to match up and won't replace correctly. Okay, so that's going to replace it with him or her, um, and I can put a link to all the various text replacement, the little article on the Creation Kit tutorial site um, about how to use text replacement. So this is just a small example of what you can do with it. All right, so click OK. Now it's going to give you some spelling errors and say ignore all, ignore all, and click OK again. And it's going to say, hey, you changed the form editor's ID. Do you want to create a new form? And that's true because I took an old note and I re and I made a whole, I changed the idea of it. And so it's saying, would you just like to duplicate the old one and make it with this new data? So I'm going to say, yes, I do want a new one. OK, so now we have our new um, mysterious note note. So let's go back into the quest and set up our um, alias, our note alias, now to refer to it. So again, back on the quest alias tab of the quest, double click on the note alias. And we're going to say, we're going to do a create reference to object. So again, this is the option where it says you'll actually create an instance of an object in the world. And you can place it at, at some place. Um, or in someone's inventory. So in this case, we're going to select our TQM mysterious note note. Um, the level here doesn't matter because there's no level to the note, it's just a note. And I'm actually going to create it inside of the victim. And so what this is going to do is going to basically, as soon as the player kills the guard, it's going to stick this note into the guard's pocket. But we don't want the player to see it. This is just for convenience. Obviously, you can choose to place the note wherever you want. You could put it in the player's inventory immediately or wh whatever you really want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say initially disabled and allow disabled. And what this says is the items actually, this note object that we're going to put in the victim's pocket will be disabled when it's created, which means it actually won't appear. It'll be invisible in the world. And that way, the player, if he loots the guard's inventory, he won't see the mysterious note in there. So this is for convenience. We can just have our one, we can just leverage our existing um, aliases and just create the object, create our note in the victim's inventory. Just just keep it until the until the player goes to sleep and then we can move it into the player's inventory and then re-enable it through scripting. So leave it on the victim, allow disabled, initially disabled. Uh, another important thing is we have to check this uses stored text and what this does is it allows us to actually use this text replacement inside of the note object that we created earlier. If you don't have that checked it's not going to fill in those words correctly so make sure to note that. Click OK there and so we also need to go back into our victim and we have to set one more property on him. We have to choose this stores text object. If we don't have this checked, it's not going to be able to, um, it won't be able to do that, that um, text replacement in the note as well. So you have to have it on every alias that is referenced inside of the note, inside of that the words we wrote in the note, 
um, you have to have the stores text object or uh, property set. So I need to do the same thing for the player. Okay, so that is the basic uh, basic parts of our quests. Let's go ahead and close and save our progress. All right, so now that we have the basics of our quest set up, let's go ahead and add some scripting to it. So again, let's open up our TQM quest um, 06 quest. Let's go to the quest stages tab. So again, as I mentioned, we'll start up here. The startup stage for our quest is index zero, and that's basically when the when the player has just killed the guard. We're going to enter in this stage. So what we need to do is to be able to detect when the player goes to sleep, we have to register for that event. So what that what registering for an event means is just that um, normally our script can respond to there's there's actually an event called on sleep start, and this is fired off in the script um, when the alias or the actor that you're referring to goes to sleep. But to res to actually receive that event, you have to register for it. So that's what we're going to do here in our papyrus fragment for um, index zero or for stage zero. So to do this, it's pretty simple. We just do alias underscore player dot register for sleep. So it's really not that hard at all. So alias underscore player, if you remember, if you click properties on the fragment, it automatically adds references to all of the aliases inside of your quest. So alias player is our, uh, refers to the player, um, who, you know, the first of our player, so we can just register it very easily. Um, one thing to point out though, is you do not want to do alias player dot get ref dot register for sleep, um, even though that would seem like the right thing to do when git ref returns the object reference or the reference to the actor, or sorry, you could do get actor ref. Um, this is not correct, because uh, that will actually, you actually want the register for sleep on the alias itself, because we're actually going to add our event script to the alias, not to the actor. Okay, so compile and make sure that works. Now let's go back to our quest aliases tab and we'll add some scripting to the player so that we can add that on player or on uh, sleep event. So um, this is our player alias. Let's go ahead and add a script. And just double click new script. And for the name I'm going to call it TQM06 player script. And click OK. Oops, sorry, this. I'll call it player script 2. Okay, so there's that. Um, now just double click and open it up. Okay, so here's the script itself. Uh, it's pretty simple. It starts out, it says script name, TQM player script 2 refers to, or extends a reference alias. So all we need to do is add our function for listening to the event, the uh, on sleep start event. So it's event on sleep start. And then it just takes two parameters float af sleep start time float af oops, af desired sleep end time okay so what these are doing according to the documentation uh, these two parameters the first one tells you the number of days that have passed when he initiates sleep since the beginning of the game so if it's day five and you start sleeping it's going to say day five and then the next um, float tells you the day of when he plans to wake up. So the player says, I want to sleep for 24 hours, it'll be one day ahead. Um, it's maybe in hours, but uh, the documentation said days. So the next thing we should do is actually give the notes. So what this is, so this event, again, is, in, is called as soon as the player goes to sleep. And so what we're going to do is give the note to the player while he, or right as soon as he goes to sleep. So what we're going to do is just note, um, get ref dot enable. Okay, so there's one problem, right? I actually haven't um, said what the note is, and so the note will actually be our uh, ref uh, reference to our note alias. So we'll have to add that reference, that property to this script. Um, the next thing we have to do is actually give it to the player. So what this is, what this is doing here is it's actually enabling the note. So remember how we said initially it's the note is disabled, so it doesn't appear. This says enable the note. Now the object will appear, but we're going to immediately move it into the player's uh, inventory. So we'll say get actor ref. So again, since we're not specifying um, any object, this means we're calling get actor ref on top of our player, our reference alias for the player. So this is going to return the player's actor. And we're going to say dot add item, and we're going to say note dot get ref. So what this says is you're going to add the item note add the note item to the player's inventory. And then finally, we don't want to keep responding to this event, so we need to unregister for sleep. Very simple. Just type in unregister for sleep. Very easy. Okay, I'll go ahead and save that and close it out. 
Uh, now we need to do is actually add that note reference alias to our to our script's properties. So with it selected, click the properties button, click add property. Uh, the type will be reference alias, and the name will be note. And then notice how it should autofill because we already have an alias inside of the quest called note, so it knew to pick that one up straight away. And just click OK. And so that's everything we need for our um, player. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this and let's save our progress. Okay, so so far we've set up our quest, we set up our aliases, we made the note and used the text replacement within the note. And then we also scripted our aliases so that the player, when he went to bed, you give the note to the player while he's asleep and then only respond to that event once. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually have our quest start when the player kills a guard. So to do that, we're going to use the story manager event nodes. So um, go to the character tree in the SM event node subtree. We're going to want to open up kill actor event. Now again, this should look familiar because this is what we set on our quest. So we're going to open this up. Now, if you don't see anything, it's probably because all the nodes are collapsed. So you can just click expand all, and it'll show all you show you all the nodes. Um, what we want to do is just right click on the very top node and add a new quest node. So again, what happens is when any actor kills another actor in the world, it's going to fire off this event node. And and uh, so it could be a monster killing a guard, it could be a guard killing a monster, it could be a player killing anyone. It doesn't matter as long as it's an actor killing another actor. So what we need to do is filter down all these events. We don't want to respond to any event, otherwise the quest would start if just anything kills anything. We want to make sure it's only the very specific instance of a player kills some guard um, in the world. So what we're going to do is with our quest node selected, we're going to give it an ID. We'll call my TQM06 um, quest node. And what I'm going to do is also click the shares event uh, button. Now I can't remember if this is actually um, necessary, but what I believe this used to do is that it would send off the event data to the quest so that the quest could receive the event data and fill in the aliases. And that's important because we have um, certain aliases, such as our note that is created that depends on, or we have our victim, uh, for instance, where the victim is, alias is assigned to the victim of the, of the killing. And so we need to make sure that we have the event data. Uh, so what, we can, what we're going to do is use these node conditions to make sure that we only fire off our quest. We only start the quest as soon as a player kills, or the player kills a guard. So let's go ahead and right click and select new. The first thing we want to do is make sure that the killer actor is actually the player. So leave the condition function as get is ID. We need to change this run on. We're going to change the run on to event data. And what this says is this is these are very specific objects from the event. So in kill actor event, again, there are these two event datas. There's killer and there's victim. So we're interested in knowing what the killer is. So we're going to run this get is ID function on the killer. And we're going to make sure that the killer's ID is actually the player. So you click that invalid box and then just type in player here. So this makes sure that the actor who was doing the killing is actually the player. Okay? And make sure the comparison is still the equals comparison. Make sure it's equal to one because we want to make sure that it's true. So you click OK. And what this is saying is, so, so, so far what's going to happen is that our quest will start if the player kills anyone or anything. It could be any object, any spider or whatever else. Um, so we need to make sure that it's only a guard that's killing. So let's do that next. Let's right click and select new. We'll add another condition here. Um, this time we're going to use the get in faction um, condition. And this allows us to check what faction the victim is, a, is, um, is in. So we're going we're gonna to run this again on the event data, but this time we're going to select the victim, and then click the invalid box, and we want to look for the in guard, or sorry, is guard faction. So that's the faction that all guards belong to. So this is a very easy way to figure out um, if the player happened to kill a guard. And we want, again, we want to set it equal to one, because that says, okay, the victim that the player killed is in the faction, the guard faction. And that means every actor in the world that is a guard, so a white run guard or a rifting guard or whatever else, they all belong to the guard or to the is guard faction. Okay, and then click OK there. So one last thing, um, this node is going to fire off our quest every single time the player kills a guard. But we only want our quest to fire off the one time that he kills the guard. So we're gonna we only want it to fire sorry we only want to fire off the quest if the player is not currently in the quest or if the player has not already completed the quest. So we'll start with um, the, the is, is the quest completed already? So we'll say get quest completed is a simple function. Um, we don't need to worry about what the run on is. 
click here and it'll say TQM. We'll grab our TQM mysterious note quest that we created and make sure that that is equal to zero. So that is false. So we're saying that, okay, no, the player has not completed the TQM 06 mysterious note quest. So you just click OK there. Then we need to add another one to make sure that we're not, because the quest could not be completed already, but the quest could already be started. So we want to make sure that the quest is not currently running. So there's a git quest running function. And again, we want to make sure that it's our TQM 06 mysterious note quest that we created, and make sure that's equal to zero. So this says, is the TQM quest, uh, is, our, is our new quest actually running currently? Or is it make sure that it's not running currently? Okay, so if we go back over these, this is pretty simple. We're saying that, okay, currently our, our mysterious note quest cannot be running. It cannot have been completed already. And the, the victim was inside of the guard faction, so he's a guard. And the killer was the player. And all of these, if all these are conditions are true, then we will actually start a quest. Now to actually start a quest, we have to add it to our quest node. So you can right click on the quest node, click add quests. We're just going to add our TQM 06 mysterious note quest. Grab that, select OK, and then that should do it. So click OK and save your progress. OK, so that covers most of the quest's functionality. Now let's just add a few final touches to make everything come together. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is actually display an objective to the player when he wakes up in the morning. So to do this, let's go back to our quest stages tab. Or sorry, let's go to the quest objectives tab and let's add a new objective here. I'm going to give it index 10 because it corresponds to stage 10 in our quest. And change the display text to be read the mysterious note. And so this is display to the user when he wakes up. So let's go back to the quest stages tab and let's go to index 10. And in here in the Pepper's fragment, let's go ahead and um, set the objective to be displayed. So we're going to say set objective displayed 10. And so that will say, all right, show that objective to the user as soon as we enter into stage 10. So there's one last thing you've been paying attention is that we have not actually progressed to stage 10 anywhere in the quest yet. We want that to happen after the player wakes up. So let's go to the quest aliases tab. Let's open up our player again, and we'll go ahead and edit his script. So let's double click there, open that up. Okay, so the first thing you notice is that our event is actually when is on sleep start. So what we'd like to do is actually have it when he wakes up too. So let's do event on sleep stop. And it just takes a bool, AB interrupted, which just tells you this will be true or false depending on whether or not he, uh, whether or not the player um, was interrupted during his sleep, so he got attacked or whatever else. Um, we don't really care either way. What we're gonna do though is in here we're gonna say uh, get owning quest. So since we're we're inside the player alias, we need to know we need to get a reference to the quest that the alias is a part of, and then we're gonna say set stage on that owning quest to stage 10. All right, the next thing we need to do is actually do our unregister for sleep call inside of the on sleep stop. Otherwise, we won't get this on sleep stop event. So let's remove that from our on sleep start up here. Okay, so this is what happens. The player goes to bed. It's gonna grab the note and enable it so that it actually appears. Then it's going to put it into the player's inventory and take it out of the victim's pocket then what's going to happen is the on sleep stop will happen as soon as the player wakes up. We're going to progress the quest to stage 10. And remember, we had that fragment at stage 10. As soon as stage 10 happens, it's going to call off that fragment. And the fragment's going to say, all right, go ahead and display objective 10 that says read the mysterious note. Then we're going to do unregister for sleep. And this means that we will never respond to an on sleep start or on sleep stop event again during this quest. Otherwise, every time the player went to bed, the note would be re-added to his own inventory. And then every time he woke up, it would set the stage to 10 and display that objective. But as long as we unregister for sleep, we will no longer receive any more events. Okay, so that takes care of the rest of the scripting for this quest. Go ahead and close and save all of your progress. Okay, so let's try everything out. So I'm here in the White Run uh, guard house, and I'm going to try killing this guard, so I'll slash him. And slash him again. Okay, so he dies. So what just happened there was that the um, story manager event node where the actor killed event fired off and hopefully all of our conditions are met. Again our conditions were um, first that the killer was a player, so that was me, um, and the victim was in the guard faction. So White Run Guard is definitely inside of the guard faction and also that the quest hasn't started already and isn't over and I haven't done the quest yet so those two conditions should also be met. Uh, one thing to point out was I was mistaken about the mysterious note 
how on the alias we said that it was disabled so it shouldn't show up. Notice that it does indeed show up in the play in the uh, guards inventory. So again, a simple fix for this would just to be not to create the note until the player falls asleep or, and just create it right away or something else. It's, it's really up to you. You could create it in a different place or just put it somewhere hidden. Um, so there's lots of ways around that. I just didn't want to go into much detail to avoid this. It's a minor problem that can easily be fixed with some scripting or just a different place to put the note. For example, you could just shove it into some random barrel somewhere momentarily. Okay, anyway, so we killed the guy, so what happens is our quest starts, we're on stage zero of the quest, and we registered for that sleep event. So now we need to go to sleep to progress our quest. So, I'm going to use the COC command, which means center on cell, and I'm going to teleport myself to Whiterun Bannered Mare, just to be quick about this. So here we are, back in the Bannered Mare. I'm going to go rent a room. If it's work you need... Sure thing. Okay. It's yours for so now we have the room. We'll go upstairs and go to sleep. So remember what happens is um, we registered for the sleep event. So then that event on sleep start will get called as soon as I press enter here. And then the on sleep stop method will, or event will be fired off as soon as the um, countdown here ends. So what's going to happen is um, as soon as I press enter, it's going to move the note into my inventory. And then as soon as the sleep is, and it's going to progress the stage to 10. And as soon as the sleep's over, it's going to say, or sorry, as soon as the stage is, um, as soon as the sleep's over, it'll progress the stage to 10 on the quest, and that will, um, that we have that fragment in there to say set objective display to 10, so we'll show the objective as soon as I wake up. Okay, so we go to sleep, it fires off the on sleep start, then the on sleep stop, and notice it says started mysterious note, so there's our objective being displayed, read the mysterious note, and the top left, if you noticed, it did say that um, the mysterious note was added to our pocket, so we can go into our inventory. Go down to books and open up the mysterious note. And so it says, Dear Irem. So remember how we use the alias player name up there? And so that's my player's name is Irem. So we just replace that there. And it says, I know what you did to him, that guard. So remember how we had the alias for the um, pronoun object for the victim? So if I killed a female guard, that would say, I know what you did to her. But now it says, I know what you did to him. So that's basically everything. Um, in my previous tutorials, we kind of talked about how to do an on read. Um, for notes, and that's how you can progress this quest. I didn't want to go any further with it, just to keep it short. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of ways you can go from here. You can have the note start off a new quest line after the player reads it, or you can, you know, do the whole Dark Brotherhood thing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it was helpful. And thank you for watching.